Hey, everybody, happy Monday to you. Hope you enjoyed the show. Well, let's uh, let's let's review the show, shall we? Now, we're getting a line right now from those on the left to say the economy's in recovery, and President Obama deserves credit for the recovery. It's not about President Obama personally, but we should hold people accountable for their policies, be they left, right, center, whatever. And the policies have not helped the economic growth recovery in fact they've stalled it exacerbated a very very bad situation and to think that we have the amount of people leaving the workforce that we do and you drop down a digit a point two percent to seven point seven percent and you say gee that's great but if you look at the same amount of people last year in the workforce and you say oh it'd be you know, 8.3. Well, that doesn't sound good. And it, the same amount of people when he took office in the workforce, the labor force, however you want to put it, that'd be 10.8%. So, like everything else, green shoots or whatever, this is not real. And the reality of Obamacare is also a huge huge problem and you know all this that's the thing you know it what i get is they need to find a way to extract more taxes and go back to their line of class warfare class warfare class warfare never ever stating what they've done what they've spent and the consequences of what they're leaving us and our kids they're never doing that. And it's a, it's a tactic to get us off the substance, off what the reality is. Because if you spend $16 trillion plus and you spend more than your predecessors and you criticize your predecessor for having a half trillion dollar deficit and you had four trillion dollar plus deficits, some questions need to be asked. And when you say $850 billion stimulus with interest trillion plus, and you promise under 6% or 7.7%, and you promise growth rates of 4 plus, and we're seeing contracting even? How is it that I would feel good giving my money, more money, to people that have no respect for it? And that's what it is. No respect for the American people. Us. Because if they did, imagine how you would feel. If you had done what they've done to us in the sense of the government, we're not victims, but mind you, imagine that. If you lost an investment for, and think about the investment, Social Security paid out more than paid in in this past year. A Ponzi scheme that if the press actually had done its homework, demographically it's impossible, can't continue it. It was threatened twice by this president. Twice. Did I say once? I said twice. So you think about where you're headed and you say, okay, I've got my health care and part of, portion of my retirement. Some very big part of it. Obviously. And you say, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to have that. And who's in control of it? The people that want to spend more money and grow more government. And what have they done with what they've had? What are the results? The worst economic recovery since the Great Depression. And they want more. But the good news is it's not us, it's the rich! Well, what happens when they run out of those guys and gals? Who are they coming for? See, it matriculates to us all and that's what's happened this is a great opportunity to make the case for the flat tax or sales tax to tell how progressive taxation leads to all this to talk about the realities of the entitlement state and I think there's a 
Anytime you have a crisis, it's an opportunity to tell the truth because only truth will fix the crisis. Just thinking about that. It, I never understood. I never understood going soft on social issues, by the way. And you say, Crane, where does that come from? It's what happened with President Obama with the Born Alive opposition that he had and that was covered by factcheck.org. Taxpayer funding for Planned Parenthood. Why aren't we taking these things on? And why aren't we challenging not only the organizations, but the people who are the media on this? Not allowing the narrative to be women's health, but the death of the baby. See, we have opportunities because everybody's watching every dollar right now. And this is an opportunity to make the case. Of course, I don't think it, that kind of idea comports with what the establishment or whatever it may be and the conservative group of ours and then but that's not really the establishment is it because you got a conservative part of that and then you got the libertarian this whole divide my point is why do we apologize for the right answer and furthermore why do we accept false premises to a question? Might be on Social Security, might be everything else. Why don't we remind people what the truth is? So when they talk about throwing more money at something and calling it compassion and taking it from one group to another, we can say, well, did you fix the problem? Did you solve the problem? Well, that's terribly... Uh, you obviously don't care about those people because if you cared about the people, you'd solve the problem. You don't want to solve the problem. And that's what this is about, solving the problem. In politics, it's very difficult to do that because if you stake out a position and you have a solution, they'll demonize it and they'll take one part of it and they'll rip it apart and blow it up, take it out of context and demonize you and try to hang it around your neck. That was old politics. I think we are in a different age because of a different time, especially in light of the fiscal situation that we're in and also the age of communications that we're in. We can make the case. Conservatives. Not about R's or D's, about accountability, but you got to have accountability. To have accountability, you got to engage and be a part of things. So we should not apologize for having the right answer. And we should be much more aggressive in our communication, in our debates, in our interviews and aggressive doesn't mean rude it means going right at it and saying I don't think it's compassionate to in essence put up a people in dependency and generations in dependency I don't think it's compassionate to kill a baby inside the womb it's not compassionate to the baby it's obviously it's not compassionate to the mother and to lie about it and then just start talking about Planned Parenthood and what they do. That's what you can do. You just tell the truth about what they do. I know. Always about life, Crane, at the end. I know I do talk about it a lot. But it runs in the family. All right. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. Thanks so much for being with us. And I am going to take a time out. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you.